All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for joining our Charlotte Tableau user group for Q1. We are so excited that you're here. We have a phenomenal guest speaker today. You all are going to walk away learning so much from our guest speaker. So really excited and looking forward to our presentation today. Um, just to go over a few housekeeping items, this meeting is being recorded. So you will be able to go back and watch it and feel free to share with all your peers. It will be posted on our user group page. We really want you all to interact. Please don't multitask. Um, use the chat box, uh, interact, turn your camera on and um, stay engaged. So now I'd like to take the opportunity before we go into um, the presentation today is introduce our Charlotte Tableau user group leaders. It takes a team of us to uh, come up with these meetings. If you ever have an idea or you want to present, please reach out to one of the user group leaders and we will um, add you to the schedule. So what I'd like for each leader to do is tell us your company, how long you've been using Tableau, and then also tell us your, let's see, go to karaoke song. I'll go first. So I'm Natalie Wiseman and I'm with Bank of America. And I've been using Tableau for a little over five years now. And my go-to karaoke song is Party in the USA. I'm a huge fan of July 4th's favorite holiday and that song just puts a smile on my face. So let's go over to Darrell now. All right, hi everyone. Um, my name is Darrell Pate. I'm currently with Wells Fargo in, Char in the Charlotte area. I've been using Tableau for about seven years and good good um karaoke song that's a good that's a good one um i'm not sure you guys might have to circle back to me for that one i'll put it in the chat <laughs> all right we'll make you sing it at the end so just fly <laughs> all right thanks Darrell. on to jeremy next yeah join in from a downstairs office so you'll see my wife's name on it uh watching together for this session um, yeah, so I've been part of the uh, Tug leadership team since 2016, joined William back then when he uh, invited me. Uh, I've been using Tableau since 2013. Uh, yeah, uh, in terms of karaoke, I, uh, I don't. So I don't know, I suppose if I had one, it'd probably be Mr. Brightside by the Killers. Good one. All right, well, sounds like our next Tug meetup, we're gonna have to go somewhere where we can do karaoke. Um, I'll note that. Uh, let's go over to William next. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the tug. Uh, so I'm now working with a company called uh, PH Data. They're out of Minneapolis, full service, uh, you know, machine learning, data engineering, Tableau visualization reporting firm, uh, great group of people. Uh, I've been using Tableau since about 2014. So I guess that puts me at eight, eight years or so. Uh, We've been doing the Tableau user group since 2015 here in Charlotte. So great, uh, great experience. And uh, definitely echoing uh, sentiments of others. If you have ideas for things you'd like to share or present, you've got a whole group of people here that you can lean on now and we'll get you onto the agenda. Uh, favorite karaoke, 100% gotta be Leonard Skinner, give me three steps. So thanks for asking. Love it. Um, hey, real quick to the leadership team, um, I'm seeing some folks are in the waiting room. Can we make sure that we're admitting them? Yeah, I'll, I'll watch that for us. Perfect. All right. So what's on the agenda today? Um, next up, we're going to uh, have our special guest, John Pate, give us a great presentation, and then we'll open it up for Q&A. And then Darrell is going to give us some exciting Tableau updates, including TC, and then we'll wrap with closing. 
So we got a great agenda ahead of us. Um, so now we're gonna go into um, the data visualization presentation. So I have the opportunity to introduce John Pate. John comes to us from Bank of America. He is my peer and we are both part of the Global Human Resources Workforce Analytics Reporting Data Governance Team, also known as Wardog. Just a side plug, um, we are currently hiring. There are open recs, so feel free to go out and uh, look at Bank of America's career site. Um, it's a great team. So back to John. John, he uh, joined the bank as the data storyteller for a statistical research team that focused on how behavior impact productivity and then was reassigned to the broader HR analytics team as the lead data visual designer. John's primary role is to lead the design phase of high visibility dashboards that are both useful and beautiful. John is also on the Bank of America TUG leadership team and leads bi-weekly design sessions modeled after Makeover Monday for Bank of America Tableau users. Today, John is going to walk and talk to us about the design pitfalls he sees the most and how to avoid them. How to think like a designer and some of his go-to Tableau design resources. I don't like to use the word hero, but John successfully convinced Charlotte Transit to stop using inbound and outbound this year when referring to the light rail. So miracles are possible. You're welcome. So now I'm gonna turn it over to John. Fantastic, thanks Natalie. Um, see, let me make sure I'm sharing. Um, sometimes I add things in there for Natalie to say, and I think they're jokes, and Natalie actually uses them, so that's always fun. Um, thank you for that. Uh, so this talk, can you, can Natalie, can you confirm that uh, you can see my screen? I can see your screen. It's beautiful. Perfect. All right. Great. Um, so uh, today's talk, I'm calling I Make Pretty Charts, because that's literally how I've heard my children refer to what I do at work. And I suppose they're not wrong, but it does feel a little demeaning. Um, we're going to talk through some of that. Um, now, I told you a lot about me uh, just now, so I want to I'll skip over a lot of that. Um, a little bit of my journey, just overall, I was actually at Wells Fargo for 12 years as a data analyst, doing everything from kind of a process improvement, data mining, analytics consulting. It's a lot of Excel spreadsheet truncating and, and combining and combing and all that. This was before Alteryx. Um, doing a lot. While at the same time, um, while I was doing a lot of spreadsheet work and data analysis at the bank, I had a side gig in the last little part of that as a creative director of a nonprofit, doing exactly the opposite. I was doing a lot of graphic design, branding, social media, and website building, um, which kind of, you know, uh, unknowingly lend itself to, um, a, you know, a role I landed uh, that now is just talking about really by accident. I am terrible at networking. Terrible. Um, and yet the last five jobs I have landed have all been because of my network. And this was one of those to where I wasn't looking for a job, but a friend of mine was and said, I saw this role at Bank of America. I wouldn't be a good fit for it, but you would be, John. And so that's how this worked. Um, so now I, you know, I build tableaus that use design to explain data analysis. Um, so uh, I've been using Tableau for about three-ish, maybe four years or so. Um, and uh, I've enjoyed learning the tool. And uh, as Nellie said, I'd also leave our, our Makeover Monday, if you're not familiar with that. Um, it's a now actually defunct group um, from a broader standpoint of where they would have like a, um, a common data set and ask people just to make a, a chart differently. Um, so we do that internally at the bank just to kind of uh, you know, make it a little more accessible, allow people at the bank to kind of um, get some fatigue and stuff from inside. And so I lead all of those and talk about design. And so a lot of what I'll be talking to you today is based on uh, basically, a lot of the talks I've done about design in those meetings and things I see a lot um, from critiquing uh, both uh, our teammates' work and other places in the bank as well. 
Um, a lot of things I talked about when I think about what is good design, um, I think about it in kind of three different ways. Um, really kind of the, you know, three big buckets you need to fill. And one is, is it helpful, right? Um, so does it actually transfer knowledge? When we talk about um, what data visualization is for, the, really the goal is to be able to transfer knowledge to help someone understand something easier, right? And so is it helpful? Um, we're gonna talk about how we do that. Um, is it beautiful, right? Beautiful is a way that we engage people, you know, and design help our, our things stand apart and make it more engaging <clears throat> and impactful. And then lastly, is it easy to use? Um, which can be kind of a little bit of a hiccup I see a lot um, when, I'm, when I'm critiquing other people's dashboards as well. So we're gonna talk about all three of those things, kind of a way how we build good design, but really the first one is, is being helpful. That is the most important. And I'm gonna really show you an example of that after this. But, um, you know, the last few years we've all been working remotely. I want to show you a little bit of my work just uh, really quickly before you see the next thing I'm gonna show you. Um, and so this is some more, uh, actually a Makeover Monday entry I did um, about working remotely. So it's been a couple of years for most of us. Some of us are going back to the office. I think Wells Fargo is going back, at least some of them next week. I've been kind of remotely in and out of the office since September, um, kind of doing a hybrid model. And so it's, uh, you know, we're all kind of getting back in the swing of things. But this was a dashboard I designed in Tableau to kind of help illuminate like some things we were finding from a survey about what employees love, what, you know, what we're struggling with, and what are some of the concerns. Um, so I want to show you this because the next thing I show you um, is, uh, is going to tell you why. And so part one is, is it helpful? Um, every semester, I have a friend who teaches a class at um, Queens University here in Charlotte. And, uh, and so uh, every semester, I come and do a guest lecture for one, one night um, to talk about data visualization. And I always show this chart, and, and especially rings true for this. Um, really, and so it's my favorite cartoon about data visualization. Um, it really just talks about our dashboards, all the different KPIs we can track now. What is that KPI training to zero? And then lastly, it measures how well we understand them all, right? And so when we talk about helpfulness, one of the things I see the most is we tend often just to put as many metrics about the thing um, on one page where it becomes so confusing and overwhelming and it really doesn't tell a story. And so that's the first thing I would start with when I'm looking at a design either I'm doing or someone else is kind of thinking through, is this actually helpful? So a uh, little case study example here is uh, how to have an anxiety attack. So uh, in our Bank of America tug, um, I'll tell the user groups there, I, as Molly said, I, I serve as part of the leadership team there. And we decided a few months ago to do a, uh, a live biz competition. And what this looks like is they, they asked me and another gentleman named Caleb um, to basically create a dashboard during the tug call. Um, you know, for 40 minutes, we would, we would build it and all anyone else was doing is just watching us build it. And, uh, you know, we had a couple people from Tableau who would kind of moderate and talk through it. And, Someone who uh, is actively taking anxiety medication, probably not a great idea, but I did it anyway because peer pressure, like everything else. And so um, I literally had a, a, an anxiety attack during this thing um, as I'm trying to build them. Because listen, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty good at design, um, but I'm not fast necessarily. And so here was a challenge question. Was the profitability of tables as plague super stores for years? Build a dashboard that reflects sales, profit, profit percentage, number of orders to help Superstore better understand what's going on with its furniture division and solve the table's problem. A couple things you should know, I don't work with the Superstore data all that much. Uh, Caleb does. Caleb is a genius. Um, I, I think he literally went to college for like rocket engineering or something. Honestly, he really did. And, uh, you know, so he's brilliant. He has some sort of certification in Tableau. Uh, I think it's the highest one you can get. No one else at the bank has that certification because no one else needs that certification, really, um, to work at the bank. And so, you know, here's, here's what I'm going against. I was already kind of a little worried. And uh, this is what he built in 40 minutes, everyone. 40 minutes, this guy. And you're going to tell yourself, oh, we should have Kayla come talk. Maybe you should because um, uh, you just wait to see what I did. But, uh, but he built this, it was, it's a, this is just a screenshot of it. It, um, it had parameter actions, the tool tips were, were uh, formatted well. I mean, this thing was just, it was just a, a work of, of art, um, you know, and I could hear them talking about it this 40 minutes while I'm building mine um, with really 
you know a good idea what to what to do. And so he talked through it. When you know, in the end instance, he built a great tool. But when we talked about um, what's the problem with table sales, um, this tool does not do it itself. Right. I mean, it's a great tool that, that allows you to um, kind of explore and maybe figure it out, but it's really putting the onus on you to kind of figure out what that is. Now, I built something in the same 40 minutes and uh, listen, I just want you to like withhold judgment for a moment um, about what you're getting ready to see. It's not my best work. I'm not proud of it, but it is going to prove a point. <sighs> OK, deep breath. This is why I made in the next 40 minutes or so the same 40 minutes. Um, it's not beautiful. And so, you know, because I was just trying to throw that together. And again, I'm going to tell you, I, I literally did have an anxiety attack in the middle of it. So, um, and I talked through it this way. Hey, sales, we know about sales, you know, it actually does pretty well. It's the second best selling category. Um, the order is not a lot. So we know that it, um, you know, that they're big ticket items, right? You don't need to sell a lot in order to uh, generate a lot of revenue. Uh, the profit, as we know, is low. The profit ratio is low. But then I added a couple other metrics that Caleb didn't have. And it was the discount rate, right? The one thing you can kind of control. And what I did notice is that the discount rate was much higher um, for tables than anything else. And also uh, when we look at the regions, which again was not on Caleb's dashboard because um, it didn't ask for it, but I added regions um, as an analysis point of view. Um, and that there was one region that made money um, with tables. And so what is it that we can find? What is West doing different than the other regions? What is the East doing that we need to stay away from? And how can we look at that a little bit? Um, and so we, we uh, I'm gonna show you Caleb's again. It's so beautiful, Caleb, amazing. All right, um, and, then, and then mine. And, uh, and so we did voting at the end of this and um, we had about 200 people or so vote. And much to my surprise, because I was in a fetal position underneath the desk, um, you know, trying to soothe myself and tell me that I wasn't having imposter syndrome, that, uh, that I actually won. Um, I, I got just a few more. We're talking like 112 to like 110. I think Natalie might have voted 24 times, but um, I did technically win that. And much to my disbelief, um, you know, people would talk to me about it later. I was a little embarrassed about it. And all of them said the same thing is that, hey, you actually, you're kind of solved, like you're solved the problem, right? But this one actually was a more useful um, dashboard. This is a really good dashboard. I don't have any trouble with this. And this is amazing. But when we're talking about what is the, what, you know, how useful is it for this particular problem? You can make an argument, I guess, that this one was more useful. So when we think about design, usefulness is always the highest priority. It's always something we're striving to get towards. Now I did, um, this drove me a little insane. Um, you know, someone who prides himself on their, their design a little bit. I didn't like this one at all. So I did spend a couple more hours working on this because I needed to prove to myself that I could make something that I might, um, you know, not hate. And so this was maybe a better version of it, um, you know, where I kind of did a few things differently here. So I want to walk through a few things design-wise I did with this. Um, again, I tried, I didn't want to use any kind of custom backgrounds. I just wanted to do everything in top row um, to kind of give myself kind of some restrictions. But um, again, you know, I, I took the title here and tried to really kind of set up the, the story from the beginning, oh, how the tables have turned and the loss leaders. And I, you know, I kind of used different groupings, talk about the revenue, we talk about profit and loss and then a closer look at table sales. Um, and what I want to do here, one, a few things. One is I changed how I treated order, right? So in this last one here, I just did the same order for everything. Uh, when you looked at the categories, tables, furniture, and chairs, and bookcases from right to left. Um, here, I wanted to order it um, mostly by like from greatest to least. Um, and really, I used color differently. I didn't really need to use a different color for every category. I just want you to look at tables compared to everything else. So I just used two colors for those first four boxes and we're looking at categories. Um, and, and, and so you can kind of really quickly kind of figure out, okay, second best in revenue, not a lot of orders, um, worst profit percentage, but they have the highest um, average discount rate. And then here on the right, I try to really spell things out here, you know, kind of let you know, hey, here are the key drivers, here's what's going on um, and what we can kind of, kind of think about that. And then I create it. This is not, I'm not showing you a tableau version of this, um, but you know, there was a show details table you could use here and that would give you some details if you wanna look at it. And then a second page would actually look at the discount rate. So it's really trying to hone in on the idea of, of uh, you know, if we look at how things are discounted, at what point do you start to really lose money? And how does West um, discount things differently than maybe East or South and Central? And so I set all this up um, in order to kind of find the idea of how do I kind of tell the story 
um, better with using design. Um, this is one of my favorites, um, what I used to call bad design. And so again, we're talking about what makes a good design is to make it useful. So this was, uh, again, I used to teach a class um, or teach one class um, one night, uh, once a semester, and I would walk these college students through, you know, different basic things about how to do, you know, what pie charts are good for and line charts and all these different things, a little more basic than this. And, and then I would show them this as an example of bad design. Um, and and uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this before. This is quite amazing to me. Every time I look at it, the first 10, 15 times I looked at it, I really had to like really calibrate myself to figure out how to read it. Um, it's a little tricky. So basically what it's doing is looking at peak time for sports and leisure. So when are, are people typically playing sports? Um, and if you look at the legend here on the right, you know, it looks at um, the circle is time, started with midnight at the top, noon at the bottom, which is always a, you know, still rather weird for you because you're kind of, if you're looking at circle and time, you're usually doing it like a clock and so that would be different, but it's 24 hours. Um, you know, and then the angle and position represents something and then how much it is inside versus outside represents something. But it's just, it's one of those things that like, you know, and there's so much color going on here and so many things where it feels like, well, the main problem with it is that it isn't useful, right? It seems very inaccessible. It's hard to really get your mind around. Like it, it'd be easier just to look at the data, um, you know, line by line than maybe this for the most part. But I kept looking at this thing and I kept thinking, you know, really there's something like this, there's a little bit of genius in this. Like someone, you know, has used like pre-attentive attributes, so things like position, color, width, um, size, angle. They use them actually really well. Someone actually knew what they were doing and, and in its own way, it's, it's creatively genius. It's just not helpful, right? And so I started looking into this because I was, I was kind of really um, obsessed with what was going on with this. It feels like a really good designer made it, it just doesn't work. And I thought there's actually more to this story. Um, I found this uh, this designer, um, and uh, he he actually based this off of uh, Depeche Mode album cover. I think it's one of his favorite albums. And so he looked at that and tried to figure out how can I you know make a data visualization, you know, borrowing some of the same ideas. I would say from this standpoint, brilliant. It is creatively genius. I I love it from a creative standpoint. It's really more like visual art than than data visualization. Um, and I think even he knew. He talked about how like ultimately it wasn't um, helpful and that was the problem. So he redid it and this version of it, I think actually at some point was a visit today. And so um, this one is the same data, just done in a much more simpler way. Um, this is basically called a joy plot here. Um, generally it's basically a version of an area chart where the, each layer is kind of just separated vertically just a little bit. It uses a lot less color, but it's a lot easier to read. Um, you can kind of quickly get a very good feel for when things are done throughout the day and when they're most popular and, and, and all that. So um, a really good idea of just, you know, if it, it's not helpful, it's just not passing the test um, on what makes a good design. Uh, the, my, the step, first step I usually always take when I think about how to make it uh, more useful is always really just to ask better questions. It took me a while to figure this one out, weirdly. Um, but generally, when I start a new project, I always, um, you know, kind of have just a consultation with the client and kind of figure out, you know, we ask a lot of questions, um, you know, the simple things like, is it going to be dynamic or static? You know, that depends on how we build it. Is it something you're going to print or you're going to interact with, in other words? Um, what kind of metrics are we using? Where's the data? You know, how much time are we looking at? You know, what's all the different things, but really the most important question I ever ask, and it seems simple, but it usually takes the most time is um, why is this dashboard important, right? And, and it's a little alarming sometimes when I ask that question and um, because I think most of the time it's not a very quick answer. Um, they want to do what we talked about that cartoon before. They just want to throw every metric about, you know, insert category here on a dashboard. And I say, what, why is this dashboard important? What are you trying to do with it, right? We have to start talking a lot of questions. So just, this can take 10 to 15 minutes I've had sometimes where I just, you know, I start asking questions. I've gotten a little better. Now I don't know how to ask questions like, what are you being held accountable for? Like of all these metrics, what is it that you're being held accountable for? Or what does your audience ask questions about when you talk to them about this data? You know, let's build around that, right? Um, I'm actually working on a project this week at work and we're talking through um, some complaint data we have. And uh, there's an existing dashboard they're kind of using it and I'm, I'm looking at re, I'm going to be redesigning it. And what I noticed first about this dashboard was it, was it did really good about talking about volume. 
uh, when I start asking a lot of questions, I realize that they actually have service levels around those volumes, but there's no service level um, metrics on that dashboard now, right? And so, you know, this dashboard's spending a lot of time talking about volume, but it's not really answering the question I think they're probably held accountable for is how you're servicing those, right? So it's just asking those questions, figuring out what's important and how to kind of um, lay out, you know, those important things so it makes the most sense. Um, how to make it more helpful. The other tip is no boring title. I think the title is maybe the most underused design element um, I generally see people do. And so what I mean is everything is a design element. Your grid lines, your axis, everything is a design element. The title is a really good one because it really sets up the perspective of how you want someone to to look at it's a, it's a frame of reference it's you know it's just the, the lens you look at this graph is is you start with the title generally and so you know um titles are design element let's figure out how to do those a little better so a couple ways um if you have static data i find the the best thing to do is either have your titles ask or answer the question um just right up front to kind of you know give them a frame of reference of what you want this chart to be talking about or giving them information on if you have continuous data, um, like a lot of mine that I do at work, um, where you know people are filtering things, you may not be able to take a maybe a definitive perspective. Um, you know, I would say just be really descriptive, right? So um, I use subtitles a lot. I just want everyone to know exactly what this chart is, what it's for, the time frame, everything you know needs to be there. If I have a, a legend that I want to put, I usually put it in the subtitle as well. But I just want to really set the frame of reference up front with the, with the title, um, so there are no questions about the chart overall. So no boring titles. Um, also, one of the things I learned, and this is a big thing I learned from storytelling with data. Um, so if you're not familiar with storytelling with data, I would say, um, you know, run, don't walk, um, get yourself that book. There's a book called Storytelling with Data, it's amazing. Um, they also have a website, pretty robust community, um, storytellingwithdata.com, we have an amazing blog. Um, the walk through a lot of things, but I think one of the things I learned the most about them that I've, I've um, used a lot, especially when I'm looking at static data, um, is marrying the chart with the commentary or the chartmentary, TN, um, about all this. And so you can, you know, when, you, when you're able to add, you know, the analysis and the, and the copy, um, the text right into the chart itself, it makes it feel a little more holistic. You know, you can actually, it feels like one big, you know, element itself instead of, you know, a lot of times we kind of put, you know, the, the text of the content and then the chart. It just feels like two things, you know, they're complementing, complementing each other, but they're not really working together as well as they could. So when I can, I like to add commentary into the chart so that it all feels like one big element instead of two separate elements. And then lastly, um, you know, I don't know if we can talk about design without talking about tables. Um, and so this and there, there are times where we absolutely do need to talk about or need to build tables. I, I, tend to try to stay away from them. I, I look at them as kind of reference material. I usually work on kind of more of the executive summaries and the front end of things. But there are times when, you know, we do need to absolutely build a table. And so the good news is, is that you don't have to build boring tables. Um, the default tables of Tableau are fine, but, you know, from a visual perspective, they don't really add very much value to things because that's just what tables are. It's not Tableau's fault, but Tableau has made it available um, so we can kind of make, actually make pretty fully customized tables using a few different methods. And I'm going to talk to them uh, today, but I do have a couple websites for you to look at. If you want to look at how to do these tables, you can see at the bottom here, uh, tinyurl.com slash better tableau tables one, and also better tableau tables two. We'll get you to a couple of blog posts that walk you through how to do this, as well as with some uh, complimentary workbooks you can download and look at and back with engineer um, as you want. But basically the idea is, and when you build a table a certain way, it's a little tedious. You're basically, each each column is kind of a min zero um, in the space. Uh, you're basically kind of creating a spacer column and then inserting things using transparent Gantt. It sounds more complicated than it is, but, but, uh, but it really isn't too hard. But, you know, it's kind of a tedious way of doing it. You can actually customize and every column is flexible in terms of what you want to do with it. I would say don't go crazy. Um, you know, be be thoughtful and strategic, um, you know, about what you're adding, but it does give you a lot more ability to to customize um, each column. Because normally, if you're doing a table specifically in Tableau, you know, if you, you can't add an element, you know, a color or, you know, a year of a year to one column without adding it to every column, you may not want to do that. And so, um, you don't have to build boring tables. Again, those, those, both those websites there are going to be great resources for you. Um, the ones I use when I'm looking at tables, 
Um, everything from this kind of flexibility to adding pagination, uh, custom sorting, um, all these different things, you know, can really make your, your tables quite robust, really um, kind of very uh, versatile tool you can use. Again, great website there, um, tinyurl.com slash better tableau tables one, and then better tableau tables two. Hope you enjoy that. Uh, part two, is it beautiful? So we talked about is it helpful? Um, two is when we talk about design, I think most people think about beauty, and that definitely is part of it. Um, this is, um, this is something called stocks art. This is the kind of account called stocks art, S T O X A R T, like on the bottom here. And um, I found this person, uh, this person's account last year. And basically, what they do is they look at a company, in this case, it's Disney, um, and they look at their stock over time and they incorporate that stock over time as part of the landscape. It's usually some sort of mountainous range. So, this whole section um, here, these mountains in the back, are actually Disney stock over time, right? So it's kind of a way of kind of embedding data into art. Now I would say this is more visual art, more than art or data visualization. So you have to be careful. You can kind of get a general idea of what's happening here, but, but it doesn't give you any kind of granularity at all. Uh, but thinking through this, when I was doing a makeover Monday for myself recently, I wanted to kind of figure out how to marry this idea um, because I was really struck with how beautiful this was, um, how it you know, kind of found this really interesting way of, of incorporating data with art. And so I did something similar around um, a data set around the bike boom. So basically what this is about is after the pandemic start, we know it's that people are riding bikes as never before. Uh, if you were ever looking for a bike for your child in 2020, uh, good luck. Um, they were all out. And so, you know, because people just decided, you know what we should do now, we should all get on a bike. And so that's what they did. And so um, I tried to incorporate the same idea. Um, you know, we can be subjective about how well, but, but uh, you know, into this. And so what I did is, you know, those mountain ranges um, in this chart are actually, you know, the lighter ship, you know, the, the amount of rider, bikers that were observed um, week to week, um, both years. And so I kind of try to do it a little subtle. Um, so it's more helpful. It's not the most helpful um, source at all. But again, trying to marry this idea of, you know, uh, of beauty and, and helpfulness, right? And so working through this, um, you know, you can see that and I did all the backgrounds and everything with, I just did it in PowerPoint. Um, so I just do it really fast, um, maybe not my best, but you know, and then I, I uh, bought the rights to those little cycle, cycle is down at the bottom because I don't want to have to build that myself. But everything else here is PowerPoint or Tableau. Um, I really try to figure out a way to kind of subtly add, you know, kind of data analysis into this um, while also trying to figure out how to make something more, more pictorial or more of a graphic design kind of look. But it's always kind of figuring out what's the best use of it. You know, you're going to find yourself, you know, there are plenty of things I see data visualization wise that are beautiful, but, but they sacrifice helpfulness. And so, you know, when you're looking at especially an executive uh, type of, of work that you may be doing, um, you know, you always want to prioritize helpfulness instead of beauty in general. Uh, let's talk about how to make it more beautiful. One of the big things I, I talk to people a lot when I look at their work is white space, right? And so it's really the stuff you're not designing is, is uh, kind of really an important element here. And so here's two different versions of the same data, which one feels better. And I think um, you know, all of us would probably agree that the bottom one does. And the only difference is it just has space. And what spacing does, this white space and negative space in between all the charts, it just helps our brains organize, breathe, and kind of understand how things are grouped and how to kind of navigate through um, this dashboard. So, um, you know, you can do this really easily with padding, you know, if you're using containers, I'm a big fan of containers, even floating containers, that's totally fine. I actually use floating containers most, but, um, you know, using padding with containers and understanding how to create room in between things to let them breathe a little bit. And so with containers, especially, you can actually adjust these, you know, padding uh, pretty easily and kind of just see what feels better. But you'll find that like, usually you probably need to add more space than you think you do, um, you know, when, when you kind of uh, really take a look at it from an aesthetic point. So space is a really big one. Um, and it feels like that's not a design element, but again, everything is a design element, including the white space. Um, beyond that is alignment. This is a thing I, um, I'm actually a little, I'm always a little surprised at how often I, I end up having to talk about this with, with our own internal group, uh, Makeover Monday is alignment. And so, 
Uh, what I find is, you know, there's something about alignment, again, like white space helps us kind of make sense out of a lot of things going on. And so, you know, when you look at the one on the left versus the right, the big difference is just alignment. Um, now, I'm not going to die on the hill. When we talk about these, these KPIs on the left of both, one is in the middle, middle aligned or center aligned on the left side, and one is left aligned on the right side. I'm not going to die on that hill. Um, I tend to like the ones that are left aligned. Um, cause I do, I do like kind of a clean line across everything. Um, you can get away with middle lines. Um, but I, I feel like people kind of default to center alignment, maybe more than they should. Um, and so I think a left aligned usually is a, a little bit better aesthetic, but definitely talk about, you know, like titles, like that customer account section here and other things. I've, I've had people, you know, having consult or critique dashboards and, you know, they'll have, you know, the title starts one place on the left and then, you know, the big chart is a little bit over to the right. I and mean, then there's two small charts underneath that, but they don't fill the same space as the big chart above it. And, you know, it's just, it's just everywhere. And so, you know, kind of figuring out how to kind of align everything to where it feels like kind of clean lines. Just a few ways of doing that. There's, you can use grid lines um, in Tableau to kind of give yourself some, some reference points. Uh, containers, again, very helpful. The X, Y coordinates in your layout section can kind of help you make sure you're getting exactly you know, um, in the same X or Y uh, position as, as you know, anything else you have on the same side. And so all different ways of ways doing it, it just requires a little bit of attention, um, you know, and this is just kind of help, help, you know, if you do all the charts and everything, helping it all make sense in the layout that feels that it's going to give your charts more room to breathe and, and someone, the audiences or viewers brain kind of ability to navigate and understand it a little better. Uh, this is that same thing. So when you look at that left side um, that's not aligned, there's 10 different points. And if you look at it, you know, from left to right, there's 10 different places that it that it starts, including the title, you know, where this one, everything kind of starts at one. There's just something about our brains that just we just have to lean into that. That uh, we just it feels easier. Um, it feels a little more comforting. Um, who knows why? There's probably studies. Um, I don't know them. All right, and then the, the other one I talk about quite a bit too, and I hope this is helpful for you, is tooltips. Um, so I love tooltips. Tooltips are a great way of kind of adding embedded information um, and, and something. Um, but I find one, if you don't need them, if they don't offer any value, then get rid of them, right? Because I find that when people leave them on and they don't actually offer any value, they just become kind of noise and I'm kind of hugging around it. It's just windows popping up everywhere. I don't love it. So turn them off. But if you are going to turn them on, um, you know, make sure you design it. Again, it's a design element too. Um, so the default version of this, I understand why this happens this way, but it's kind of, it looks like a receipt. Um, you do not need to settle for that. It doesn't take long to kind of just reorient it. You know, you can take that same data and just put a little formatting to it. And this is probably honestly too much color in this case. But but I do think it's a good job of kind of, you know, getting rid of some of the unneeded duplication of things and then helping you kind of navigate and read this information a lot easier. So usually very little amount of work and you can make this kind of stand out and be a design element that you like. Uh, more Tableau specific things here, you know, quicken up here. Um, so for Tableau, there's a few things I like to do with some of these uh, charts. So this is a regular line chart totally fine. And if you want to learn more about this, again, I set up another tiny URL for you, tinyurl.com slash a little design. This is from a blog post from the Florida Twins, whom I love. And uh, this is just a regular line chart, nothing wrong with line chart. But by doing something very simple with a dual axis, again, to basically just copy that line chart and, and copy it again, and then you synchronize the axis, you'll have two line charts on top of each other. But then you set one of them to a line chart, one of them to an area chart with a little bit of transparency, and you come up with that. Um, so again, I know I went through that very fast. You can totally look at that blog post. He walks you through it, and also there's a workbook for that as well. Um, you know, but again, just going from this to that can add like a little bit of kind of design panache for you on some of your charts. It kind of helps them stand out. Again, this is about a 45 seconds of work to add that layer. It's relatively easy, um, especially if you've done it once or so. Um, it totally makes sense. Another version of this is scatter plots, right? Same thing from a, a tinyurl.com slash a little design. This one's fine, but again, add, adding a dual axis to where you have one layer showing um, like maybe just the outline of uh, the circle outline, you know, same colors, and then and then one layer doing the just a regular circle, but a little bit of transparency turns into that, right? Small little changes that can give your designs, your dashboards a little bit of a pop to help them stand out. Bar charts, another kind of interesting example. Again, a dual axis 
um, trick here is where we're just going to push all the numbers. We're going to talk about alignment again. We're going to push all these numbers over to the right. This is a little more subjective, um, you know, whether or not you like this more than that one. But again, pretty easy dual axis um, scenario where you can kind of set up and put those, put all those numbers all on the right so that they're lined up nice and neat on the side. So it kind of does both. It gives you both like the text you can read, but also you're visually seeing, you know, which ones are much bigger or smaller than others as well with the bar, bar chart. And then the last thing to do in terms of how to make it more beautiful is I usually challenge myself to make multiple versions of things. So I mock everything up in PowerPoint. Um, a lot of people do that in Tableau. That's totally fine. I do that sometimes, but generally what I like to do when I'm designing something is I just, I throw it together in PowerPoint because I like to do it really fast. Um, I just want to get as many ideas as I can out. And then I use that as a blueprint to build in Tableau. And so this is just a, someone asked me to build a scorecard for us to transition to a new system. And so I made two or three different versions. And some of these are not very different from each other. You know, maybe just slightly different layouts, maybe a different kind of chart, things like that. They all, you know, maybe different activity or how, ways you would interact with it. They're all just kind of basic, um, you know, me just exploring different ideas. And so I find that that's one of the things that, that gives me the most success. It's just, you know, just not committing to one idea, you know, exploring a few different things, seeing what feels better, seeing what works. And, uh, you know, and usually, you know, it takes me a few bad ideas to get to one I think actually is the best one. Um, so give yourself some flexibility to fail, um, to try new things, and, and but to do, you know, in a way to, to do it quickly, whether that means for you, whether that's doing it in Tableau, which is totally fine, or for me, PowerPoint, these really aren't even charts, they're just shapes. I just throw on there and throw text on top of it. So it's just, that's easier for me, um, but maybe not for everyone. And then lastly, um, we talked about, is it beautiful? Is it... Um, helpful. And then lastly, is it easy to use? And this is, I think, a, a little bit tricky one for, for Tableau, us Tableau developers. Um, so how does it feel when your audience wants to interact with the design? So I learned about this idea about Norman Doors um, last year. So it's, it's based off this book that was, uh, that was written, I think, a few decades ago, um, The Design of Everyday Things, if I'm, if I'm right about it. And basically the idea of, uh, you know, that door, uh, you, you have, this happens to me all the time, where I go uh, to walk through something, QT is really bad for me. Um, and I, I go to push it when it was supposed to be a pull or something like that. Um, and I realized that like, at the end of the day, doors are doors, like you're not done, the door is, right? And so a definition is a door where a design tells you to do the opposite of what you're actually supposed to do, or a door that gives the wrong signal and needs a sign to correct it, right? So when I'm talking about, is it easy to use, we're just looking at a few different things is, is it, you know, we build a dashboard and someone uses it, you know, does it work? Is it broken? Um, you know, does it kind of work? Maybe not, maybe not what you intended, you know? The baseline is like, it, you know, maybe it has most of the metrics, you know, like, you know, it kind of meets the minimum standards. Um, you know, maybe in the middle here, it's kind of, it makes sense. Um, you know, maybe oh, after that, maybe get what I want, but, but really what we're looking for is it's a pleasure to use, right? It combines beauty and helpfulness and the use of it is really, really easy. Uh, this is all based from a talk that I think is maybe the, um, it's one of my favorite talks actually at Tableau Conference, the last one in person in 2019 um, called Beyond Design. You can access that, um, just type in Tableau Conference, Beyond Design, there's a YouTube video of that. It's amazing. Um, I think it's, it's one of my favorite conferences I've ever been to about design, or the state sessions I've ever been to about design. Totally recommend that one. Um, very good. And really, how do we get better at user design? And, you know, the tricky part is we just, um, you know, how do we do it? We just have to kind of get feedback. And sometimes that's from you. So a lot of times what I do, if I design something, I don't send it to a client or, or another teammate until I've slept on it, you know, unless I'm on a really big time constraint. But, you know, I like to kind of sleep on it one day and look at it another day with fresh eyes. And a lot of times it is like, oh, you know what? This doesn't really make sense. Like, because when you're building something, you may not be able to see the forest through the trees. And so, you know, this idea, sometimes you're too close to it to really be objective about it. So I try to give myself some space. Um, beyond that, I also just let other people look at it, you know, especially with mock-ups, it's a really, um, when I do mock-ups in PowerPoint, it's a really easy way to kind of give it the client, say, okay, how does this feel? Does this make sense what we're doing here? Um, you know, and I kind of walk into what the interactivity might look like and, and see if that kind of makes sense for them before I build it. And, you know, and those are always really educational. Um, and I've even done a few, you know, just like full out um, feedback sessions where, you know, I build something, and we have someone look at it and we don't tell them anything and say, okay, which part of the system is you think? Which part gives you like some, some 
<sighs> some pause and uh you know it's, it's never what i expect and uh and you know and i and i just have to make a few changes and that's ultimately a better experience but overall you know it's just going to take some perspective and time um you know, someone else's perspective your perspective and, and time uh tedious dashboards the big one when i think about easy to use this is a one of the first dashboards i ever made so it's not my favorite but um you know one thing that i find with 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 tableau dashboards sometimes which gets in the way they might be beautiful and they might be kind of helpful, but they're just tedious, right? And there's just a lot of filters and, and you really have to, you know, one thing I remember I was looking at, uh, we were doing some data sets around um, baseball players through the years and com comparing one baseball player to another. And I noticed that a lot of people were doing it to where you have to select one player at a time, you know, and then the rest of the dashboard would show you their, their matches, but you never could compare one player to another, right? So at the end of the day, that's, that's just tedious, right? This is something called the uh, Curry uh, popcorn rating. So Steph Curry loves popcorn, and he gave a rating to all the popcorn um, based on five different categories. And so I created a radio chart for the first time over here, and tried to do a few things. And when you clicked on, uh, you know, one of the one of the cities here, you know, it would, it would give you kind of a more um, nuanced view of just in this case it was Charlotte, um, you know, how they were rated based on presentation, freshness, saltiness, crunchiness, and butter. Otherwise, but ultimately, it was, honestly, it's kind of tedious to use. Um, the original data visualization was a heat map, and it worked way better. It was simpler, and you know, it was just, it was just easier. So, um, this is a first lesson of mine. Like, I can make something that looks snappy, but it's not easy to use. And so, it's not easy to use. It's probably not helpful either. Um, so, you know, one of the things to think about, especially with executive dashboards, when you're putting a bunch of filters and whatnot, you know, um, how can you make it to where it's a, it's a joy, it's a pleasure to use, and not feel painful and laborious and tedious to do things. That's sometimes tricky, but I think it's worth talking about. Um, this is uh, another big thing in terms of how to make it more useful is uh, to include instructions. So I always tell people, you know, when they're, when they're looking at dashboards, if you have something for me to do dynamically, you should tell me, right? Write it out. Don't expect that I would know what to push on in Tableau. And so a lot of times if I ever need you to click on something, I'm going to have like a little arrow or something to tell you, you know, click here. And I probably should have actually just said click here to switch the linear scale if I know I'm looking at it. You know, but there's a couple different ways. So if you want someone to interact with it, make sure you tell them how. Um, so a few different ways to look at that. Here we were looking at distribution of the world's wealth and I was talking about log scale versus linear scale. So we've seen a lot of those at the beginning of COVID. And so when you click on the scale, you know, it would do the same data, but put it on a linear scale. You can kind of go back and forth and I would add commentary in there and whatnot. There's a couple of ways of doing this. One is just like a help button. You know, you can use a tool tip or show high container to kind of get more information. Um, or I've done where I've overlaid graphics where you click on something that overlays something that kind of gives you a lot more commentary on top of this chart does this, this chart does that. You can always do that, um, you know, but, um, but, uh, but also very, very helpful. We're almost at the end. Actually, I think this is it. Um, and then really lastly, you know, design with a user in mind. Um, and so one of my favorite go-to resources when I'm talking about user experience is Zach Geis. Um, you can see him at uh, ZachViz or datatheories.com. Um, Zach Viz is his Twitter handle, by the way. So, um, but datatheories.com, I think he's, for my money, the best Tableau developer in terms of user interface. Um, you know, the way he designed things, um, is quite, um, I, th I think, really useful and amazing. And you design things like almost like those websites. Um, that's sure. the kind of way I think about it. So <laughs> when I'm when I'm looking at these, get that cover off first. I'm getting a little background noise. Um, so when I'm looking at these, you know, we want to we want to design these, um, you know, kind of more more like websites. Just kind of get out of the typical maybe the Tableau setup and go from there. So. Um, you know, a great resource here, uh, go to datatheories.com. He does a you know, design, Tuesday design tips he's do a lot of. Um, really great resources for you to kind of think of how can I create this with more of a, you know, a user in mind to kind of create a more flawless user interface. Um, and a lot of times that requires a little bit of customization, um, but it's totally doable. None of it's super hard. Um, you can do all of it in PowerPoint um, if you need to. So really great resource there. And that's it is it. I went fast. I know that's a lot. Um, you know, again, this is my uh, infographic I made after my favorite Tableau session ever, Beyond Design. Um, probably says it better than I did just now, but, uh, you know, they're really good resource here. Again, I would recommend that. So there's a couple of different tiny URLs. Um, let me know if you, you need those again, um, and we'll go from there. Again, it was tinyurl.com slash better Tableau tables one. 
better tableau tables too. And then there was a, a, a little design, tinyurl.com slash a little design. Um, and then and then here, you know, beyond design, if you want to do a search of that, really great resource for you as well, um, which I think is one of my favorites. And that's it. Any questions, thoughts? Natalie, did I do okay on time? Yeah, great. I've learned a lot. Um, does anyone have any questions? Feel free to unmute and ask John, or you can use the chat feature. We got a question for you, John. Do you um, own a unicycle? <laughs> I do. I do. I've been, um, so very quickly, I've, I've been really weird about balance lately. So I have a slack line in the backyard. That's easier. Um, and I got a unicycle at Christmas that I have yet to conquer. It's, it's really daunting. I don't really know how, but we're working on it, but uh, I just find it. I don't want. I don't want to be that person who rides a unicycle everywhere. I just want to know how. Um, so it's uh, it just for some reason cracks me up. So yes, I do have a unicycle. Love it. Well, great. Thanks so much, uh, John, for volunteering and uh, coming to present to our. Charlotte Tableau user group. As a reminder, this is being recorded and we will be publishing up to our user group page in the next day or so. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over to Darrell to give us some Tableau updates about TC. Thanks, John. All right. Thanks, Natalie. Um, and awesome, awesome presentation, John. That was really great. Um, so I want to talk about uh, Tableau Conference uh, for a bit. I'm just going to share some of the latest details about the hybrid model that they're going to be using. Um, but before we get into that, um, there is a, let me share my screen. Um, I did want to share with you guys the uh, Charlotte, our Charlotte Tableau user group homepage. Uh, so you guys can take a look at, um, you know, if you want to contact us to actually present. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right, so this here is our Charlotte Tableau user group. I believe Rashid put this in the chat as well. Um, hey, if Darrell, you want we to just see... lost your screen share. We see your desktop now. Okay, perfect, thanks Rashid. Can you see it now? Yeah, yeah, it's back again, yep. Great. Yeah, we can see it. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with this one, this is our uh, Charlotte Tableau user group landing page. This is where a lot of our presentations go, both future and our, our past links to YouTube. If you want to take a look at, um, you know, some of our presentations and John's will be posted um, a bit later where you guys can take a look at that. Um, if you want to speak, uh, feel free to reach out to our group. We can work with you guys to work on your presentation or if you want to co-speak. Um, really, we're trying to get the voice of Charlotte, um, people who are using Tableau here in the area. Uh, we want to do our best to make sure you guys are heard and talk about what you guys want to talk about. All right. So that conference 2022 this year. Uh, for the people that get to go in, per in person, it will be a treat. It will be in Las Vegas um, again, which is a great place. Um, I've actually been to a Vegas uh, Charlotte Tableau user group um, session as well. It was my very first session going to going to Vegas and I learned a lot. Um, it is really fun though as well. Uh, this will be a two and a half days. Um, so speak to your companies about um, hotels, lodging, logistics for tickets. Um, you may be surprised, especially if other people um, are not going, you may be able to snag a ticket. I know that definitely worked for me. Um, some of the sessions that I've definitely enjoyed, there's lots of sessions from everything from design, like John Pate touched on, um, actual hands-on with Tableau, um, Tableau doctor and brain date sessions are really great, but I would definitely say some of my favorite have been the hands-on training. You definitely get a lot, and oftentimes the learning sessions are shared. And if you're there in person, I would definitely take 
um, take advantage of the brain dates, meet people from different companies who are potentially going through, you know, some of the same challenges or uh, opportunities that you have within Tableau. And it's a great networking tool. Um, so yeah, I wanted to share this information with you guys. If you're not going in person, no worries. A lot of the materials will be posted online. So you will be able to participate either live or after the fact. Um, I think there's presentations going back to 2019, which was, as John said, the last fully in-person session. That, I think they posted a lot of those sessions online as well. So definitely take a look. And um, I'm sure there's definitely a plethora of materials you can get familiar with to, to help you there. And with that, um, I'll go ahead and close this out. Any, any uh, closing thoughts from the leadership team? Hey guys, this is Rashid. Real quick, I can tell you a little bit more about conference uh, as stuff is starting to come out. Um, it is going to be to Darrell's point in Vegas. Um, I believe we're going to secure the Mandalay Bay for people who've gone before. They haven't made that official yet, but I think that's coming any day now. To Darrell's point, it is hybrid and virtual. Um, so it's what Darrell showed you is if you do go to Vegas, that's some of the stuff you can participate in live, but there's going to be a lot more virtual, meaning there might be 25, you know, enablement hands-on type sessions, but in reality, there'll probably be over 200, but the other 150 will be virtual. So everything will be available through the free virtual, you know, um, sessions, if you will. Uh, so it's not like, you know, you're, you're not missing out per se, if you don't go to Vegas, it's just in Vegas, you'll be able to experience a lot of that stuff in person, as opposed to, you know, kind of watching some of the, 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 the virtual things, you know, in, in that nature. But to Darrell's point, whether you're live or virtual, it's a really, really good opportunity to hear from experts kind of all over the place with respect to Tableau. Um, I, I used to learn a lot of stuff in areas where it's like healthcare and retail, and it's just how they're using Tableau to help people understand data. So like I said, sometimes thinking outside the box, you know, to John Pate's point, you know, it's a really good place to kind of really, you know, get that type of a broader perspective of how a lot of industries use Tableau to kind of help people see and understand data better. And that's great. I'll just do one more plug in for Jeremy. I don't know if he wants to talk a little bit more about this, but if you are going in person and maybe you're one of few people that are going um, from your company, definitely uh, take a look at Jeremy's tool. And if he has a survey still open, um, take a look at who's going to be in town within um, TC and where they're from. I think it's a great tool to kind of reach out to someone pre Tableau session and get, get some session buddies or at least people who are going. So Encourage you guys to check that out. That'll be in the chat. And if you ever, um, I think they're going to make me one again. Tableau Doctor. Uh, it's some people don't realize that's that's an opportunity to get your question answered by a variety of experts in almost every aspect of Tableau, prep, server, installs, design. Take advantage of that. I can't stress that enough. If you ever had something that you struggle with in Tableau, sign up for a Tableau doctor session, even if it's virtual. Um, trust me, it's one of those things that it comes in handy. It's nice to just know you can have an expert that just says, hey, this is what you should do, or Tableau is not the best option. Or like I said, with all of the different aspects of Tableau, I think it's a really great thing to kind of um, take advantage of if you can. All right, great. Well, um, thank you guys for joining us for our presentation today. Um, we'll be having another session soon, so look for the details for that, and hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks, John.